Now, I always kind of compare and contrast this because there's something you have to understand about the stock market that makes it sort of very bizarre. The stock market is not, I'm giving you cash and you're giving me a product. It's not like buying a Model T. You are literally giving a company money and in return, they give you a piece of paper and they say, here, you now own part of the company. But that's it. Stocks are just pieces of paper until you sell them back. Now, of course, you hope that when you buy that piece of paper, it's cheap. And when you sell it back, that price has gone up. This is the basic idea of making money in the stock market. Now, Nathan, I'm so glad that stock worked out for you. That's awesome. And I wish that it always worked out that way. I've had some success in the stock market and some serious failures. I will always remember, this was three or four years ago. I bought a company that I thought was just gonna go crazy. I, my first shot at retirement, Dare Biosciences. Uh, this company's gonna make it big. If I remember, I think it was trading for like $4 a share. I bought it, it went up to $80 a share. I was getting my plane tickets, I was getting my coconut drinks ready to go. And it collapsed to nothing. All the money I put in there, gone. Now that can happen. In the stock market, there are good days, there are bad days. There are good months, there are bad months. There are good years, there are bad years. But if you know what you're doing, and if you're sharp, and you can believe in what the numbers say, you can make an unbelievable amount of money overnight. GameStop proves this. We had people, average individuals, time it just right, and make more money than they would in their entire life, all in the stock market. Now, I need to say this. Have you guys heard of the Dow Industrial Average? Okay. There are a bunch of ways to kind of classify stocks and kind of put them together in different groups. The Dow Jones is probably like the best indicator of stock market health. It's the biggest American companies all kind of put together in this one indice. Now, with that said, the Dow goes up and down and up and down and up and down. But right now, it's at one of the highest points it's ever been. It's right now, I think if I remember right, it's like 32,000 points right now. Huge heights. Because even today, people are still speculating. You hope you put your money into these companies at the right time, that price goes up and up and up and up and up, and then you sell at the right time. Old saying is, buy low, sell high. Now it's real, it's, it's all but impossible to time the bottom of the market and the top of the market. You just hope that you get close. Now in the 1920s, the same thing's taking place. The Dow is on the rise, and there are plenty of people that say, this is literally free money out there. I just have to invest my cash, watch that company grow it, and then I pull it out at the right time. If you know what you're doing, you make money for doing nothing. You just have to be careful when you do it. Because just as stocks rise, stocks fall as well. There are good times and bad times. So we have some kind of icons, some, some symbols for when things are going well and when things are going poorly. Right now, we have one of the biggest bull markets in American history. Stocks are going up. In 1920s, we have stocks going up. And I will tell you this story. Now, maybe you believe me, maybe you don't, but this is what happened. In the 1920s, when stocks were on the rise, there was a meeting of one of these big, uh, of one of the biggest firms in New York. There's like 20 people. And during that meeting, one of these executives is saying, these stocks are going crazy. Things are just on the move. They're all going up. How do we like classify this? And there was a young guy, a guy who was 22 years old, sitting in this meeting, brand new to the company. 
He said, I know. It's like a bowl, isn't it? And you have these guys going, what? It's like a what? He said, yeah, it's like a bowl. He's like, Johnson, what are you talking about? He goes, you know, because the bull's horns go up. The stocks are going up. It's like, Johnson, you're an idiot. But if you're this marketing genius, what do you want to call it when stocks go down? And he goes, it's like a bear. And they go, why is that a bear? I kid you, I think this is almost a quote. He says, because when bears walk, their claws go down. It's like, Johnson, you're fired. Get out of here. But it still sticks. So we call these markets when it's going up, a bull market. When it's going down, a bear market. I kid you not, this is why. Now, when we look at what's taking place in the 1920s and stocks are on the move, there's opportunity. There's opportunity for everyone, but you gotta be willing to take the risk. You gotta be willing to put money into the game in hopes that it grows. Now, I will tell you from my own little experience. Now, Nathan, you said that you bought Tesla only when you said December, is that right? I bought it in March. Back in March, okay, all right. So like the perfect time? Yeah. Okay. Because my mom just came up to me and like, oh, you need to buy stocks right now. <laughs> Excellent job, Mom. Now, I'm going to bring you back, so I want you to think about this. Do you guys remember, like, the day when, like, the world fell apart? When, like, we said, it's like, okay, like, go home. We're not going to go to school anymore. And now you got to wear masks everywhere. Like, do you remember that day? Mm -hmm. yeah. Moving up to that day, like, honestly, like, three days before that, I had money in these stocks, and they were doing okay. They were doing great. They were doing fine. And then all of a sudden, one day, the stock market dropped like 1,500 points. On that day, I lost right about $1,000 for my stocks. And here I am saying, this is a disaster. This is terrible. And I was even talking to Mr. Weiss about it. Mr. Weiss is an econ guy. And I said, Mr. Weiss, what should I do? He goes, you got to just stay in. Don't pull the ripcord. Don't panic. This happens all the time. It'll go up. Next day. Stocks dropped like 2,500 points. I lost like $1,500 the next day. And I go to Mr. Weiss. I'm like, Mr. Weiss, time to panic yet? He's like, nah, not yet, just wait. Next day, I lost $500 more. So I'm down like $3,000 in three days. I'm like, Mr. Weiss, now is it time? He goes, yup, now is the time to panic. Pull the ripcord, get your money out. So I just sold everything. And I had the cash, what was left. And I thought, oh my God, I don't know what's going to happen here. Things got worse for the next few days. And I thought, well, it could have been worse. What a disaster. So I waited about a month or so. And I was watching these stocks go back up. And I thought, maybe now's the time to put money in. Nathan, your mom was saying the exact same thing at the exact same time. I took all the money that I had left and pushed it in the middle and bought some new stocks. And thank goodness I did. I made all my money back plus about another $10,000. Hooray, that's good news. The bad news is I should have put more money in when it was down. I took a good chunk of money and bought what I could. I should have put every single cent I had I should have borrowed money to buy stock. You can do that, and it's called buying on margin. It's basically buying stock with borrowed cash. Now, the idea behind it is you borrow money that you don't have with the hope that the stocks go up. Now, had I known what was going to take place, had I known these stocks were going to rebound enormously, I would have borrowed $100,000 and said, let's roll the dice. I think I can double this. Of course, I was terrified and didn't do that, but a friend of mine did. He made a ton of money because he was willing to gamble. Now, let's kind of play out had this not gone well. If I would have borrowed $100,000, bought stock, and then it falls apart, goes down to zero, 
first of all, my wife would murder me. Second of all, I would still owe that money. But the stock that I bought is worthless. Because you got to remember, stock is just a piece of paper. It's worth what a company says they're worth. This is what makes the stock market very weird. It's not tangible. It's all just kind of up in the air. So hopefully, your stock price goes up, but you never really know. If you borrow the money, you still owe it. And if your stock is worthless, you're in a lot of trouble. Now, I want to explain something with a quote from a guy who's made literally billions of dollars as an investor. This happened, uh, I think it was like a year ago. He had this one stock, he had American Airlines, and it had a real rough day. It dropped like 10% in a day. And someone asked him, they said, Mr. Buffett, how much money did you lose today with that American Airlines stock going down? And he goes, nothing. I didn't sell it. Maybe tomorrow's a better day. Next day, price went up 15%. So in two days, he had a big low and then a big high. He was up 5% over two days. It's the way it works. There are good days, there are bad days. I have two pieces of good news for you. The first piece is, that one does. Put your notebooks away. Second piece of good news is, today you get your chance to be a billionaire. Trillionaire, even. Mm -hmm. Using like stocks to help you get there. Is like the $10 thing? You're on again? No, I promise I'm not lying. Okay. That's how lying works. This time I promise. Maybe. What we're going to do is we're going to play a stock market game. Now, the way it's going to work is you have an opportunity for double peanut butter cups. I promise. Now, what I'm giving you right here is how we're going to keep track of how you've done putting your money in the stock market. Now, first, let me explain how you get your peanut butter cups. In a moment, I need you to find a partner or a group of your choosing. You're going to be competing against your partner. So whoever has more money at the end of this wins. So half of you are winners, half of you are losers. It's like life. Then there's an overall winner. Whoever has the most money at the end gets peanut butter cups as well. Now here's the deal. In just a moment, I need you to find your partner. I need you to sit next to him or her so that I can just see who you're going against. And there's also one other caveat I want to tell you. Now, I need to do this first, and then we're going to talk about the rules. So what you need, take your packet, something to write with, just sit next to your partner for right now. Now first, what did you do? Just write your partner's name on the top of your packet. Just so I know who you're going against. If it's a group of three, that's fine. But just so you know, you're competing against two people instead of one. Yeah. Now again, you're competing against your partners. Whoever has more money at the end gets peanut butter cups. But I will go ahead and tell you something that happened to me years ago. A few years ago, and Miss Erickson, you you never heard this. Okay. okay. A few years ago, I had someone in my class say like, "Hey, hey, my partner and I have like a side bet." I said, "Well, what do you mean?" He's like, "Well, we want to bet each other that I can beat him in this." Like, for legal purposes, I never heard that. Okay, that was a lie. All right. Good. So I remember, I'm like, well, what